we all need to have. Vision. Vision of being able to see that the world can be a better place. A vision for your organizations to see how you can create better experiences. A vision of how you can become the leaders that you all need to become. But you know what's also more important than vision is the action. It's what do you do with the vision? What do you do when you see you can create that better organization? When you see that you can create those experiences? When you see that you can become that leader? What is the next step that you are going to take? And the action piece is important because I think we can all agree that the world of work is extremely outdated now. It's extremely outdated. In fact, if you were to look up the word employee in the dictionary right now, you would find that synonyms for the word employee include cog and servant. Actual synonyms in our dictionary for the word employee. If you look up the word manager in the dictionary, you will find that synonyms include boss and zookeeper. Zookeeper. And if you look up the word work in the dictionary, you will find that synonyms for the word work include daily grind, drudgery, and struggle. Now, if we put all of these things together, we are cogs working for you zookeepers as we go about our daily drudgery. Wow. I mean, it really makes it sound like work sucks. Uh, how many of you guys have seen the movie Office Space? Okay, pretty much everybody, right? We can all agree that that's meant to be a comedic film, but sometimes if you watch it with one of your peers or coworkers, they watch it like it's some kind of a documentary. And this is kind of the mentality that we need to get through to challenge our conventional ideas about work, what it means to be an employee, what it means to be a leader, what it means to actually work. And now, uh, this is why I think it's such an exciting time for all the change and the transformation that we are starting to see. And you might remember a time when you could smoke in the office. You might remember a time when you could simply work nine to five. And you may also remember a time that when your company had a job that it wanted to fill, you would take out an ad in a newspaper, put a posting up on your website, go to a career site or a message board. You would put up that job posting and one by one, prospects, candidates would show up to your door and they would try to convince you why they should work for you. They would talk about their skills, their accomplishments, the schools that they went to, all those amazing things that they did to try to convince you why they should work for you. And now look at the world that we're in now. You don't smoke in the office. You don't work nine to five. And today when you have a job that you want to fill and when these prospects and when these candidates are coming to your door, who's asking the questions now? They're asking you the questions. What is it like to work here? Is there a sense of purpose and meaning? Am I going to make an impact? What technologies am I going to be using? Do your leaders act like coaches and mentors? What's the workplace culture like? They're asking you the questions. And what that means is that we need to shift from creating an organization where we assume that people want to be there or for, where they need to be there to creating an organization where people want to be there. This shift from need to want is what I think employee experience is all about. This is what a lot of organizations are struggling with. And I know now we keep hearing uh, this phrase, right? The great resignation, it's BS. We are in the world of the great opportunity. This is the great opportunity that is if your organizations and if you as leaders are willing to change. There is some research that's done by a psychologist whose name is Thomas Gilovich. And one of the things that I was fascinated by over the years is that how is it that some organizations are consistently able to attract and retain top talent? How do they seem more innovative? How are they creating better customer experiences? What is going on? And we've also seen over the years that there's been a huge investment in employee engagement programs. In fact, over the years, we've never spent more time, more money, more resources on employee engagement programs, but look at what's going on in the world. In a lot of cases, employee engagement scores have stayed the same. In a lot of cases, they've even dropped. How does that make any sense? You would think if you put more money and time and resources into something, you would see tremendous improvement. But unfortunately, the way a lot of organizations view employee engagement programs is kind of like a short-term adrenaline shot. So what do I mean? I think we can all agree that on day one, nobody ever starts working at your company saying this place sucks, right? 
Nobody shows up on day one going like, oh my God, what am I doing here? On day one, people are excited to be there. They want to make an impact. They want to know who they're going to be working with. Which customers are, are they going to be working with? They are genuinely excited to be there. And what happens? Well, we get outdated workplace policies, bureaucracy, hierarchy, outdated technologies, and all of a sudden, our satisfaction, our engagement levels go down. And right about here, the company says, we are going to do our annual employee engagement survey. And we do our annual engagement surveys, we get like a 68, and we freak out. And we turn to HR and we say, hey, um, we need like a 98 or a 99, can you guys fix that? And a bunch of HR people get together and they say, all right, well, how are we gonna improve this? Anybody got some ideas? And somebody raises their hand and they say, oh, I got an idea. Why don't we give them hot yoga on Tuesdays? And guess what? It works. We give them hot yoga on Tuesdays. And then what happens? Outdated office politics, bureaucracy, hierarchy, blah, 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 blah. Our engagement levels go back down. And then we say, well, what else do you got? And somebody says, why don't we give them free food on Fridays? And again, the satisfaction goes up again. And this is what has become uh, an employee engagement program in a lot of organizations. In other words, we're not actually making changes to the core workplace practices of the company. We're just giving people stuff to distract them from the sad reality of what it's like to be there. This doesn't work. Employee engagement programs cannot be this sh these short-term adrenaline shots, these, these short-term uh, fixes. They require that we make actual changes to the core workplace practices inside of our organization. So I mentioned a psychologist by the name of Thomas Gilovich, and he did some really, really cool research over the years, and I actually had him on my podcast. And one of the things that he figured out is what happens over time if you invest in a physical good versus if you invest in an experience. And what he found is that if you invest in a physical good, I mean, an iPhone, for example, what starts to happen is over time, your satisfaction levels go down. But he also found that if you invest in an experience, if you invest in an experience, what happens is over time, your satisfaction levels go up. So what the world's smartest companies have figured out is how do we make it feel like when employees start working here, they didn't just buy a good, they invested in an experience. They didn't just buy a good, they invested in an experience. So how do you make it feel like when people start working for you, it's not a transaction, it's an experience, where over time their satisfaction actually goes up. 